wait, wait. It was really obvious that you were fake scissoring it open. Okay. Don't scissor it. Yes. <laughs> Scissoring. Okay. All right. All right. People on the internet like watching unboxing videos, right? Don't they? Oh, I thought you were talking to the camera. No, I'm talking to you. Oh. Just keep it kind of loosey goosey. Yeah, they love unboxing. So we got some cute marketing here from Hunter. They packed the perfect breeze, which is, you know, nice and all. But I would argue that it's actually more than just cute marketing. And that's what we're going to talk about today. But we got to start with what's inside this guy. Let's start with a brief history lesson, AC induction motors. In 2020, Hans Christian Ersted discovered that a compass needle would deflect when there was a nearby electric current. Building on this, William Sturgeon invented the first electromagnet in 1824. Okay, the basic unit of our discussion today, I just made a little example electromagnet. Uh, you can find a lot of tutorials on how to make these online. It's just a battery uh, connected up to a wire that's wrapped around something metal, in this case, uh, a bolt. So you can see it's not magnetic, but as soon as I connect the wires to the battery, it should... There you go. So this one's not very strong just because of how I made it, but you can see that now it is magnetic. If I remove the wires, um, again, it's, it's not a magnet, so. That same year, Francois Arago discovered he could create rotating magnetic fields with a primitive version of a stator and rotor. Faraday and Maxwell further built on this understanding with their practical and mathematical demonstrations of electromagnetic induction. Then, by the late 19th century, Nikola Tesla used this knowledge to develop one of the first induction motors. So you can see we got like almost a tenth of a microamp, which is just not enough to drive that LED. So, um, but we do see that it is actually generating a current by running it that way. So you can put a current in to make it spin or it works in reverse where you spin it really fast mechanically and then uh, you can get a current out. We already looked at how a single coil with current running through it turns into an electromagnet. So what you have in your fan is just a series of them. And when the AC current flows through them, you'll have alternating north and south poles. They're going to move around the edge. And then the result is a rotating magnetic field, which drives the fan blades around. Here's an electromagnet just like the one that I built, and if we run current through it, we get a magnetic polarity that looks like this. And then if we swap the direction that the current is flowing, the polarity will switch. Let's see what happens when we line a bunch of these up in a row, just like that. And with each subsequent magnet, we've changed the direction that we've run the wire, so you get these alternating polarities. Now, of course, as we change the direction that current is flowing, like what would happen in an AC circuit, these all flip just like that. So if we do this repeatedly, you get an effect that looks like this, and you can see how the polarity is sort of moving across that row. And then if we arrange it in a circle, we get the same kind of effect. You can see how the north and south are rotating just like this. And with that rotating magnetic field, you just hook up some blades to it. And voila, you have a fan rotating. All right, this time let's do the opposite. Instead of using current to create mechanical motion, let's input a mechanical force to rotate this blade, which of course now is going to cause a rotating magnetic field. And in that rotating magnetic field, we'll put a wire. When you introduce a wire into a rotating magnetic field, you induce a current, and that current is usable by other 
appliances that would use electric power. This is how wind turbines work. As air flows through the blades, the turbine spins, and there's a rotating magnetic field. A wire is located in that rotating magnetic field, which is, induces a current, and that current flows to the grid. This is the general model for electricity generation. You need some type of input force that drives a rotor and turns your electric generator. Uh, it could be the wind, wind turbine example, it could be a hydroelectric plant, uh, you could use steam turbines, and there's a bunch of different ways to make steam. Uh, you can use nuclear power, coal, natural gas, solar thermal, anything that can heat up water to make steam. Power in the grid is sent back to your house. And if we hook up an electromagnet to our house's power, or maybe we'll substitute the electromagnet for this ring of magnets, like I demonstrated earlier. And of course, the actual picture looks like what was inside my fan, this ring of electromagnets. And then we turn it on and you get a fan spinning. So that's how you go from wind power, hundreds, thousands of miles away, to spinning a fan in your living room. All right, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go never install one of these again and stay curious.